Hi folks, welcome back to ECS Coffee. My name is Jack and today we're looking at the Bun My Cafe MCU Coffee Brewer. This is a coffee brewer by Bun, which is known for commercial brewers and uh, more rudimentary pour over brewers. But this one in particular has a few special quirks and features. It uses a unique system, which is an interchangeable basket system. These different baskets, there's four of them here, allow you to brew in four different ways. I say four different ways, that's kind of being polite because one of them is for water. So it allows you to brew in three different ways and then also have water. So the baskets I have here in this order start with K-cups and then it goes to ground coffee. Then we have coffee pods or tea bags and then we have the hot water. Uh, a lovely, lovely coffee you can get out of hot water. So I've already got the machine all set up. It works very similarly to other bun machines. If you haven't seen our video on how bun machines work or the different bun machines, you can check that out um, up there or up there. I'm not sure which side it comes on, um, but that'll be popping up now. So this machine works very similar to other bun machines and it has the same sort of heating system. In this machine in particular, there's a 14 ounce reservoir in the back that is just constantly being heated. So there's always gonna be water sitting in this machine unless you intentionally dry it out. That means that the water is always hot and always ready to go for the most part. So as so long as you keep the machine plugged in, it'll keep the uh, water heated and keep it going. So if you, you know, wanna have multiple coffees throughout the day, the water is always going to be hot. It's always going to pour right away. The only caveat to that is, and I have it written down here because you watched the video so that you didn't have to read it. So I'm going to read it. I'm not ashamed that I'm reading it. Uh, after six hours idle, the temperature inside the water tank drops to 140 degrees. So the standard brew temperature is 200. And after it drops to 140, which is 60 degrees Celsius, if you uh, use Celsius, uh, it takes one minute to get back to brewing temperature of about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So. After six hours, it'll drop down so it's not storing almost boiling hot water on your countertop forever. But then after 26 hours idle, so a little more than a day, so keep that in mind, you can leave it for 24 hours and it won't do this, but 26, uh, it goes into a sleep mode. So without activity, it takes about two minutes to return to the optimal brewing temperature, which is 200 degrees Fahrenheit again. Uh, which is 93 degrees Celsius, if you are curious about that. So yeah, it's not as scary as some people may think. You know, some people are afraid of leaving hot water basically always on on their countertop. You know, if you were to go on vacation or something, you wouldn't want 93 degrees Celsius water sitting in a tank constantly being heated on your counter because you know you're not going to use it. So you'd want to unplug the machine. This machine, you know, you, you want to unplug sometimes, but it's totally safe to leave it plugged in if you want to. Um, and then there also is the 26 hours. So after 26 hours, it will go to sleep mode. So there's nothing to worry about. The only concern I see there is that after six hours of idle, it goes down to 140. I don't know why they didn't make that eight, considering you could you know, interact with it before you go to sleep, get eight hours of sleep and it'll be ready in the morning, but it is six. So if you sleep for a short amount of time, you'll be fine. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I'm gonna run through each of the uh, brewing methods with the machine. And by each of them, I mean the three of them, because I don't reckon you'll want to sit around and watch me pour hot water out of the machine. So we're going to start with the K-cup. Um, so this is the K-cup basket. You can open it just like that from the handle, and it opens right on up. Grab a K-cup, pop it on in there, and then boom, close it up. And you got to push hard to, to pierce it. So once you've got the K-cup thing, you slide it on in there, and you're ready to go. Now... This machine is a bit weird. You wouldn't really want to use it for an office like other button machines because in this one in particular, because the reservoir is so small, you're going to have to refill it in order to use it. You don't have to have to. There is enough water in there to use it without refilling it. But if you want to keep that constant heat going, you want to replenish that 14 ounces of water. And there's a couple good ways to do that. You can either measure out the amount of coffee you want to brew. Say you want to make eight ounces exactly. You can measure out eight ounces and pour it in there. Or you can do a little bit easier method. You can take your cup. So I'm going to use this paper cup here. You can take your water. I have it in a pitcher because I did not want to keep running to that sink during this video. And you fill up your cup and you say, hey, I want about that much. So it's almost full. You don't want to fill it up all the way because you don't want to overflow it. Fill the cup up almost all the way. And then you pour it in here, up in the reservoir. You can make anywhere between four and 14 ounces. So, so long as you're between that amount, you should be good. Pop the cup under. Notice there is no drip tray. And the older models, there was a drip tray. 
On the box, there's a photo of a drip tray, but they don't give you a drip tray anymore. Fun little fact for you. And then you close up the top. You really don't have to do this, but you can. Uh, and then you just hit brew. So if that little green light is on, that means it's ready to brew. If it's red, it is still heating. There is a second button on here that is pulse, and the pulse function you hit before you hit brew, and then that will slowly pulse the water going through to make the coffee taste bolder. It exposes the water longer to whatever you're putting through it, whether it be a tea bag, coffee pod, a uh, K-cup, or I guess you could pulse on hot water, but that would just be, you'd, you'd, you'd be a dumb person if you did that, but you can. So you hit brew, and it will brew, and it's gonna be pretty quick. Uh, the reason for that is that the water is already hot. It's sitting in the back. You can feel the back. It's sitting hot. So it is going out fiercely quick. It is like a strong stream. There is a little bit of splash on the inside of the cup, but it doesn't look like there is much on the outside of the cup, which is good. There's just some specks of, uh, of coffee coming up. This is a high power stream, uh, as far as I'm concerned. You know, you won't get this high power of a, of a water stream from a, uh, a Keurig machine or anything like that. Okay. It spits at the end. You won't get the high power of a stream from a uh, Keurig machine or anything like that, and typically not on super autos either. This just seems like it is forcing the water um, right out, uh, which is good. It's quick. It's just a little bit messy. So you can see there's some, some splash on the back and I don't think that's really avoidable. So coffee is made. I can't really show you because I don't have a camera person, but you can see the cup here. So there you go. Uh, it's very hot. It is, I believe it is 200 degrees Celsius. I don't have a thermometer on me. I'm gonna take their word for it. And uh, yeah, so you can see right now it is green again. So it is already ready to go again. I'm sure if you brewed back to back to back to back, you would need to give it a little bit of time to heat up that new cold water that you're introducing through the top here. So this reservoir at the top now is now empty because it has taken that and put it into the water tank, which is constantly heated. This smells really good. I'm gonna put it down and not drink it because I am weird and I don't actually like coffee. <laughs> so I'm gonna put that there and then we're gonna move on to ground coffee. So right here, we've got um, the ground coffee variant of the basket. We're gonna take some of our 1.21 Great, Great Scott Espresso Blend and we're gonna put that in. Why espresso blend? Because that's what we had open. Uh, this won't make espressos. It is not an espresso machine. It is a drip coffee machine. Um, but it does have the filter and everything ready. So you can make ground coffee. We just happen to have an espresso blend open behind the counter. And so I am just doing the easy thing and uh, going for that. Now it suggests two scoops and 10 ounces of water. So I'm gonna put one scoop in there. And that is both on the user manual and on the scoop that I think they provide. Although to be honest, the machine was already open when I found it and the scoop was just sitting next to it. So it could be from another machine, but I'm pretty confident that this is the spoon. So we're gonna put that in there. Of course, there's a little bit of spillage. So you can see there, I kind of spilled it a bit. It's not the cleanest method ever. Although that is a little bit of user error there. And I'm just gonna close this on up right here. So I'm gonna close it up. It should click down. I gotta take this one out. I forgot about that. Let me put that down for a sec. Let's take out the K-cup. You just pop it open like that. And then it reveals it. So there's kind of a cool mechanism in there. You pop it open, it raises up. Take the K-cup out. Get rid of that into the hole in the counter. And you're good to go again. Now let's throw the ground coffee in. I'm gonna put that in right there. And just to make it easier, this is a eight ounce cup. So I'm only gonna brew eight ounces, even though it suggests 10. So I'm gonna do the same thing again, rather than filling it from the pitcher, I'm gonna fill it from the cup so that I'm certain it will not go over. I'm just gonna fill it right from the cup. So we're gonna pour the water right in there. This is certainly less than 14 ounces, so I don't risk overflowing or anything and we're gonna pop it down here. I would have liked to see the uh, drip tray remain. I'm not sure why they discontinued the drip tray. The rest of the machine is a matte black plastic, so it's probably a whole lot cheaper not to ship that drip tray. Um, so we're gonna hit brew again when it's ready, which is now, so we're gonna hit brew again. And there we go. So it is now brewing. I am prepared for the high speed 
explosion of water to come out of this thing like last time. All right, so it's a little bit slower this time. I think that's because it's going through the grounds of coffee and it's got a bit more, uh, bit more oomph behind it and a bit more blockage because we did pack it pretty full of grounds. But that was the recommended amount, so it's going a bit slower. So we can actually open the top. They do recommend to keep it closed, so don't do this at home. But you can open the top and you can see the water draining out and filling into the tank to displace it. So it displaces the hot water with the cold water and then heats up the new cold water, makes that hot for the next coffee. So the, the water you're pouring in right before you brew is not actually the water you're, you're using for that cup. The water that you're pouring in is the water you're using for the next cup after that. So it looks like it's almost about halfway done. Uh, reason for that is likely just because it is so packed full of, uh, of coffee. There's a lot more coffee in those two scoops than there is in that K-cup, for sure. That's not even an extra bold blend. So if you wanted an extra bold blend, you could use that. Same with any other Keurig machine. Um, it just has, or any Keurig compatible machine, it just has more coffee in the K-cup, which makes it more bold. So you can kind of hear the machine. It's making some squeaking noises every once in a while. It was at the beginning. I think that's just because it is using that very high pressure that it has, but it is getting stopped at the coffee and uh, getting soaked in there and everything. Uh, it does come through a shower head from the machine. So that will soak the whole coffee and eventually you know, push it through. So it seems to have finished up. It is very hot. These cups are pretty thin <laughs> and uh, it smells like coffee and it looks like coffee and I believe that it has done a good job making coffee. It is dripping. I didn't realize that. <laughs> so I'm gonna put that back in um, until it stops dripping or until I get fed up and pull it out, which I'm doing now. So we're gonna pull it right on out and it has got some water in the top still. So you'll probably, if you're not on a time crunch, wanna let that sit, but I'm on a time crunch. So we're gonna ditch this in the in the garbage here. It's a little bit mucky. So you'll wanna rinse this out afterwards because it's pretty, pretty mucky and yucky, but I'm just gonna sit that there. Next up, we got the coffee pods. So this one in particular, it looks the nicest, I'd say, you know, having it on there, it's got the stainless steel finish. It looks the nicest of all the, the baskets. So we're gonna take this Donut Shop Original Roast Pod. Um, I found this one sitting around probably because it's likely expired, <laughs> but it should work all the same. So I'm gonna open it up. There's probably a special way to do this that I'm not aware of, but tearing it apart seems to work just fine. And then there's no, uh, it doesn't seem like there's any um, inside or anything to pull out for this one. This one just seems to be, uh, you just stick it right on in. And you can do the same thing with the tea bag. Um, so you stick it right on in and then you slide it on into its spot. And then let's say we only want to make this much for this cup. So a smaller amount. This is more than four ounces, so it should be just fine. Um, but it is a smaller amount and we're going to pulse on this one. But first, I'm going to pause for a sec because I need to clean up the mess the last one made. Okay, so we've got the pot in there and we've got the uh, cup we're going to be using. We're going to fill this cup with the water. You can hear that right now it is not ready to brew. So you can see there's a red light on it. That is because it is heating up the water that we had used before because it hadn't had a chance to heat while we were brewing. So it's actually gonna take a little bit of time to heat up that new water. Now it's not gonna take long. Maybe like, it seems like it's only taken, gonna take like 30 seconds. Yeah, it's, it's ready. Um, but you do have to sometimes wait because if you're constantly refilling it and constantly rebrewing, it's gonna need some time to heat back up. So we've got how much we want. I hope this is more than four ounces. Now that I'm holding it, it seems a lot less. And we're gonna pour it right in and try not to spill it. Yeah, so it's about six ounces. And uh, we're gonna slap this on the bottom, close that on up, and we're gonna pulse for this one. So we hit the pulse button, it turns red, and then we hit brew. So this will make it brew a bit slower a lot slower so that it, the coffee is more bold. So it's sitting and uh, soaking in the coffee for a longer time. So it's pulsing, it's sitting with the coffee, and then it is continuing. And then pulsing again, same with the coffee, and continuing. So you can see there it's doing it pretty slow, which is expected. So we're gonna sit here and wait until it is done doing its thing because I don't have a whole lot more to say. 
I guess I can talk about some more stuff that I have in my notes because I'm not gonna lie to you. I had to Google this stuff. So it's got a two year warranty, um, one year if it's a refurbished unit. I mean, you'll, you're likely getting a new one if you're getting one. So two year warranty with Bun. Um, it suggests that you clean your coffee maker at least every three months because mineral deposits may accumulate due to impurities in the water uh, that are used to brew. Now, with that in mind, do not use distilled water. Uh, distilled water or reverse osmosis, anything without minerals in it, you don't want to use. I'm not sure why, they don't really explain why. I think the reasoning is that it needs the minerals either to brew or whether it's for the constant heating system or whether it's just to know that the uh, tank is full. Some machines just require minerals just for their sensors and whatnot. But nonetheless, it says right here, I'm underlining it. You can't see that though, because I'm holding the clipboard away from you. Um, make sure that you don't use uh, distilled water or anything. All right. So it is done. It has made the coffee from the pod. It looks very bold. It's very dark. Although to be fair, all of the coffees have been different types. So I'm not, I'm not being very consistent. And uh, here we go right here. It is very hot to the touch. So much so that I'm not going to touch it again because I'm going to burn myself. <laughs> and then I'm gonna sue us. Okay, and the last drawer here is just for hot water. It's literally just a little divot and a spout. That's because on the bottom here, there's actually a shower head. When I take this out, duh, so I'm gonna take that out. On the bottom here, there's a shower head and I'm gonna insert a little shot of that for you. With that shower head, as I explained, you get more soaking of the coffee before it goes into your cup, which is something you want and something that Bun loves to do. That's their thing. So overall, it's a good little machine. I would say it's better for home use. Um, you know, if you've got a small office, it'll work as well. But, you know, having an office where people are <laughs> required to refill it with water after every cup, um, if you really trust the people in your office, say hey, it might be worth it. But uh, there's bound to be that one guy who doesn't. And then you'll come and it won't be hot and you'll have to wait. And yeah. So it's good for home use. Um, it's not constantly always super hot. It does sleep, which is nice and is a good touch so that it's not just sitting on on your counter 24 seven, so long as you forget to unplug it. So that's good. But yeah, overall, if you are indecisive with what kind of coffee you like to drink, whether it's K-Cup or Coffee Pod, or if you have a few different favorites that are only available in specific varieties, whether it be an ECS K-Cup that you just happen to love and 1.21 ground coffee that you also happen to love, you know, you can uh, roast it in house and everything, you know, uh, you can, uh, <laughs> You can use this machine and have both, which is a good thing. Now there's other options. If you were to get a Keurig machine, then you could also get, you know, a My K Cup, I think, or a EcoFill, whatever they're called. And you can put ground coffee in there, or you could put a coffee, you can shove a coffee pot into your Keurig if you really wanted to, but this is designed for it. And so this will be better overall with it and we'll have less troubles. I've also heard that this machine is very reliable. It's been out for probably about eight years now and it, apparently outlast the competition very well. Buns are known for being sturdy. That's why you see them at all your restaurants and even McDonald's, they use buns. So they're known for being sturdy. It's very simple. They provide instructions on basically tearing it apart in the user manual just to clean it out if you need to and uh, how to diagnose issues, which is really nice. So if you're looking for a small little machine that can do a whole lot, this is a little bit more expensive than the very tiny Keurigs, but it can, it packs a whole lot more into that package. I can say it looks kind of bland. It uh, has got the stainless steel, which is nice, but otherwise the black plastic is a bit dated, yeah. but it does its job and it does it well. If you're able to find one with the drip tray though, they do look a little bit nicer with that. And it would get rid of some of the splash. Um, that is an issue, I'm sure, because the coffee wouldn't be falling as far down. I've also got the dimensions here written on this little card. Uh, it is 10.1 inches deep, 7.2 wide, and 12.1 inches high. But yeah, that is the end of the video. So if you liked the video, leave a like. If you really liked it, you can subscribe and catch any more coffee machine reviews and other shenanigans that we get up to here um, in the future. You can hit the little bell and get notified every time we upload. That's down in the bottom next to the subscribe button. I suggest you turn that on. All right, again, I'm Jack. The end screen is about to come up. It's gonna show you a video that Google recommends and a video that we recommend. So check those out as well and uh, have a nice day.